Hello and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. My name is Tim Smith and you're watching our series on business and peace. Our guest today is Dr. John Forer. John is the director of the Institute of Corporate Responsibility at George Washington University and an associate research professor of strategic management and public policy. His research examines issues at the crossroads of business, globalization, and policy and his globally recognized expertise in business and peace studies has led him to participate in numerous international panels and discussions on this vital topic, in addition to his many publications. Today, Dr. Four will, sh will share with us how business can work together with other stakeholders to take an active role in promoting the peacemaking process by building trust and stability. John, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure, thanks for having me. Could you share why business partnering with other stakeholders is so crucial to the peacemaking process? Sure. I think there's several reasons. We might think of them as a demand side and a supply side. Okay. On the demand side, there's such a need in many of these countries, um, failed states or fragile states, weak government institutions, and they're just not able to perform those kinds of functions, mm -hmm. provide those services that we need for people. So we need businesses engaging the stakeholders to understand what's really needed, what makes for good public policy, what makes for good action, so that whatever efforts they do take fit well and are well received right, by those groups. Mm -hmm. But I think on the supply side, when businesses want to try to take actions that promote peace, you know, there's a great demand for information if you think of it almost in a business context, they need to find that information in the data. Mm. They need to assess and analyze that data. They need to validate the findings. It's all very expensive. Mm. And if you were to do it um, you know, unilaterally and on your own, it's so much cheaper in order to engage with stakeholders, in order to gather that information, make those assessments, and then believe that the actions you're taking actually will be impactful. Mm. That's important, obviously, for the people in those communities. I think it's equally important for the business and their stakeholders to believe that when they are taking an action, they will be impactful, mm. they will be money well spent, and it'll want to encourage them to keep on going and doing more. Okay, thank you. Yeah. In the United States Institute for Peace <clears throat> special report that you co-authored, it was titled, How Business Can Foster Peace. You mentioned that companies' impact on peace will vary in size, ownership, and industry. Could you explain how these factors affect a business's ability to influence the peacemaking process? Yeah, sure. Well, traditionally, as you know, it's been governments that have been seen as having the main control and the responsibility for advancing peace. And when they do that, they kind of start with a blank slate, or at least mm. they have an opportunity. They try to assess what the problem is. They come up with programs or policies that address it. They resource it, and then they implement it. So the efforts that are taken, or at least we would hope the efforts mm -hmm. that are taken, are really targeted and stylized to that particular situation. When you start to bring in business into the equation, well, obviously they're already set to do something completely different, right? They have their own strategic goals, they have their own cultures, mm -hmm. they have their own experiences, organizations, all those factors that go up to making a business unique. So when we want to draw on those resources, we have to look at what is that business what situation are they in, what skills, what assets, what possibilities might they bring, and then adapt that oh, okay. to the situation, okay, right? Sure. I think too often people who at least are open to the idea of businesses promoting peace, but they want to give an assignment to the business as though it were government, right? Mm -hmm. And then if the business pushes back, then they get mad at the business for not doing what it is <laughs> they want to do. Mm -hmm. so, I think working the other way, understanding where businesses are coming from, what their capabilities are, how they're engaging their customers and their markets, what their constraints are, all those issues are kind of critical to understanding before we start trying to figure out how might they contribute. Some businesses can only do a little, some can do more, that will change over time. So I think it's a very dynamic area, but kind of the point of the report was to point out to people that they can't just go make a prescription and then expect businesses to adopt it. You have to engage businesses, understand them, convince them, persuade them. But if you do, there's tremendous promise yeah. in businesses having a positive effect. That's very interesting. Would you have any success stories to share with us about that? 
Well, I think there's some, um, you know, if you think of companies that are consumer-oriented companies, right? Those that are selling are in the markets or in the fields. It's very easy for them to present programs, to support training programs, to try to engage communities and peace building mm -hmm. activities because it's in their interest to understand those customers. Mm -hmm. And they do have an understanding of those markets, so it's kind of easy for them to move in. It's easy for people to recognize those companies, maybe like a Coca-Cola, um, and to know that their products are already in the store, and so when they're trying to do more, it fits easily. Mm -hmm. okay. If you're one of the extractive industries, right, you're kind of remote, you're behind often in remote areas, mm -hmm and they just have a whole different dynamic and relationship with the communities and with their workers. So you would think a different set of activities, mm -hmm. more built around their workplace, would be the kinds of things to target on. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. For businesses that are just beginning to look into expanding internally, what should they keep in mind to ensure they expand in a way that promotes stability and peace? Right, well it's a tough question. You know, from the panels today, there's such a broad area of things that businesses can do. People talk about economic development. People talk about rule of law. Mm. People talk about good ethical behavior. But I think one of the things that they could pay more attention to is what they're already doing now. Many multinational corporations are very active undertaking policies and programs in the area of sustainability and sustainable supply chains. Mm. Or they've adopted their own policies in reaction to international events around um, human rights or human trafficking mm, okay. and, and other issues, um, and general corporate social responsibility programs. Mm -hmm. I think one of the areas that's most promising and would be helpful for business is to understand what is the impact of making supply chains more sustainable on peace. Mm. I think it's probably fair to say that businesses are contributing a lot to peace already and they don't even know it, mm. right? So I think it would be really helpful if we could start to identify what are you doing now, and then the businesses can get credit for it, and then look on that margin and see what else might you do in a way which makes the supply chains more sustainable or which makes um, respect for human rights, pushes that boundary even further, but at the same time advances peace in the area. I guess mm -hmm. it's kind of a business twofer. Yeah. Right, but, exactly. we don't, but we don't know very much about that, about that area. So I think that's something that if business is really focused on that, it'd be also a lot easier for them because they're spending so many resources mm. and so much time already, it doesn't seem a big lift for them as though they're taking on a whole new topic area. Mm -hmm. Right, like you said, a twofer. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us today. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please let us know at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu.